Hey guys, Heavy Arms 45 here. Now, last January I had talked about DC all month. I talked about Superman being uh, a Marty Stew. I talked about Batman. I talked about uh, the whole Justice League. And I just got you watching Christ on Infinite Earths, the finale of it for this, uh, of the crossover episode. For the Arrowverse, and I got so amazed by it. It was awesome to me. A lot of nostalgia came into play because you had like the guy who played Robin back when Adam West was in it, and you had uh nods to the original Tim Burton Batman and conversation. Well, a character who was supposed to have been the Superman from the old um Superman movies. And so many other connections. They connected everything. It blew my mind. But. That's nostalgia did. Lead me to a different problem. Um, and I've thought about talking about this for a while. And this dealing with justice and comic books. And that justice that goes from comic books to like the cartoons and the TV shows. And the anime series. Okay. Justice is very weird when it comes to um, those types of shows. Because if you actually think about it, and I think they have had comic books about it, and there was a joke in Superman Returns that talks about how uh, Lex Luthor was basically acquitted for all his crimes because Superman wasn't there to testify. If you actually think about it, the whole vigilante justice, there is no Miranda rights. These people have already been basically found out, found guilty. But, you know, we give them a trial anyway because in if you go with comic book knowledge, they publicize that they did it. Sometimes they even have people still lie from the crimes that they did. Like, Joker. J the Joker toxin, he, it doesn't kill everybody, but it puts put a grin on their face. And, you know, once Batman gives them an dope, they know who did it to them. It was that man over there with that big grin. You know, everyone knows who the Joker is. And when it comes to Batman or Superman and all this stuff, there, it's odd how they do it. Because, like, with Batman... Everybody goes to Arkham. Arkham is an asylum. It's a criminal asylum, I'll give you that. But it's supposed to be an asylum for crazy people. Because everyone's supposed to be crazy. But they can't handle all the different people that's in there. Like, literally, how do you keep poison ivy from plants? Plants grow everywhere. Like, if, in a matter of seconds, she could make a... If you give her an orange, she can make an orange tree. Like, just a little bit of dirt, and she can make it grow. She can make anything grow. She literally has a green thumb. Arkham is not made for each one of these people's situations. Um, like I said, it's supposed to be a asylum, a criminal asylum. But technically, everyone should go to Blackgate. Blackgate is actually made for the criminal for criminals no, but they're made for regular criminals and for the most part a lot of people are regular criminals that they go against like take for example penguin penguin does do crimes he is a thief and like everyone else but the thing about penguin is he has no special powers he literally the special power he has is his tech. His umbrella gives him all the special power. And his thing of being basically like a mob boss. So he doesn't have any special power. So should he go to Arkham? No. He should go to Blackgate. You know, Joker should go to uh, Arkham Asylum. Uh, Mr. Freeze should go to Blackgate. He's not crazy. He just wants his wife back alive. And that's nothing crazy about that. But they use Arkham as though it's the end all for all like superpower people in Gotham. 
But we also know that there's a black gate, which actually deals with the criminals. But there's no, like, sure they put them in prison, but how do you control a killer croc from being a killer croc? Like, you keep him in, they probably keep him somewhere in like a little swamp land to make sure that he still can like have some of his own habitat. So he's basically like in a zoo. But other than that, that's all he sh he gets, you know. Um, also, with these so many crazies, like let's take the Arkham Asylum movie. I mean, games. They build up what this asylum looks like, and the asylum is basically just a bunch of giant prisons. But it has all the criminal situations that anyone would think these people look crazy. Like, they don't just leave them in their thing. Every, by Technically, by law, if I remember correctly, everybody's supposed to have a time outside where they are able to stretch their legs and stuff like that. That doesn't work for Mr. Freeze because Mr. Freeze has to stay in his climate control room. You know, uh, you do that to kill a croc, he might try and go ahead and uh, eat you and then try to escape. You know, uh, who else? Two Face, you never have to worry about because Two Face is too is always not sure of anything. But also, you're talking about you're putting all these different villains that basically some of them act like mob boss, and each one of them have followers, and you just put them all in like a place where they can get together commit crime, or well, figure out a way of getting out, and commit crimes. You know, it's not like these people have never teamed up before. And literally, like, because of the justice system, a lot of them probably get out quickly. Because if you think about it, that's the whole problem with the whole Batman, Superman, all these other, you, you know, with comic book logic, we need to have these people come back. We can't keep having a new villain that they have to go against because the court was able to stop them. Like, Joker and Lex are the main people that is known to fight Batman and Superman. So they always have to find a way to get out. But the fact of the matter is, with justice the way it is, there was no way that they could stay in because Batman, sure, he helped them catch him, but also he's not, ha he has no certificate saying that he knows how to uh, pick up evidence. So he has no uh, CSI training. So every piece of evidence that the police pick up is basically contaminated. You know, are the police not sure if whatever he has on him is a plant from Batman? Batman is technically unreliable as a hero. At the same time, it not surprised. I I would not be surprised. What I'm trying to say is that Lex is being let out by the government because let's face it. You know, if we don't know what it is, we want to hunt it down and dissect it. Superman is a superpower alien. That is well known. And the only reason that he gets to go wherever he wants to go. And he can be out in the sunlight. Is because yeah he saves people. But also there is no one out there that can stop him. Hence why there are secret experiments done by Star Labs. And other organizations. To try and find ways to put Superman down. If he ever goes dark side. Besides Kryptonite. Because. You know, every time Kryptonite comes up, all of a sudden, it magically goes away. And I don't mean because let's get it. I think most of the time Superman gets one of his robots to get it and they crush it or find some way to get rid of it so that it can't hurt him. The only people that is known to have Kryptonite on the regular is either Batman or Lex Luthor. And I think if no one knows who Batman is... I think that they're not really worried about Batman having it because 
that's kind of like black on black crime for some people. You know, let's let the vigilante take care of the vigilante. But yes, Superman is supposed to be for truth, justice in the American way. He is always there to defend uh, justice and be a hero to all. But if he ever decide to go dark side, you would need someone who knows the ins and outs of dealing with him. Hence why Lex keeps keep being let out. Why? Because the government always mysteriously loses evidence dealing with him. So that they can go ahead and let him out. Here's why he's also made president at one point. Because the government needs someone who knows how to take care of him. And sure, you know, every once in a while, uh, Lex may like start something that could possibly kill people. But let's he he's doing that to try and stop Superman. So he also has somewhat of a monopoly on knowledge of Superman because he's the only one who always fighting Superman. So they constantly make it letting him out so that he can keep working on his work. Even if they leave him in prison, I think that they let him go out into some secret lab so he can work on himself. Because Superman is an unknown threat. Like a, like in Boondock said, he's an unknown unknown. You know, so yeah, the whole justice system in uh, comic books and cartoons is some of a joke. Because if you really think about it, there's no way to contain most of the villains in these shows. Um, like, like I said, there's no way that you can keep Poison Ivy in there. Um, it's hard to say how in the world you would control the Joker in there. Two-Face is easy. Uh, Killer Croc is known to kill people and escape on the regular. So Arkham is a unsuccessful prison colony that really can't control its people. Even, and if you even think about it, the people who are usually in charge of Arkham are criminals. Like, if I remember correctly, in some situations, Hugo Strange is the head of Arkham Asylum, which is the crazy leading the crazy. He is literally one of the most devious people in the show. I mean, in uh in the storyline. Oh yeah, and of course you have your uh useless characters like the Riddler. The Riddler is dangerous. Don't get me wrong, but. He is not a superpower dangerous. He is a qu quick thinking dangerous. But in all honesty, like I said, justice is a joke when it comes to these people. There is no way one that you could try put these people on trial and find them guilty unless you had a actual videotape. Because by the time the superheroes get through it. They've technically tainted all the evidence. It's not like you have Superman or Batman going around with a body cam like, see, this is what happened when I baited there. They don't do that. They'll capture them, say it's time for you to get put down, and they arrest them. Sure, you might have witnesses, but some of the stuff could be unreliable. Plus, if you think about it, if, and this is why we call them vigilant, a lot of the stuff that happens in their shows will basically make it to where Batman or Superman are liable for damages to different things. Because, let's think about it. Unlike a police officer, because I've looked at being a security guard, a armed guard, and one, I met somebody who went through a class for it, and when he went through the class, they t he said that they told him that he's in charge of every bullet. So if he accidentally shoots somebody, 
he is well known that they will shoot they will sue him for that as a police officer you we hear of police officers all the time getting sued for stray bullets but they have someone to cover them for that batman and superman has no protection they are vigilantes which means there are probably several lawsuits against them for damage done to different uh different structures because you have never seen superman or batman going to a fight where there was no city damage they are always destroying buildings and you all know what that's all i want to say that that's also criminal too because i like to think and we always talk about how bruce wayne Oh, I'm sorry. Nobody's supposed to know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. But Wayne Enterprise does not do any weapons. They used to. They kind of did like Tony Stark. We used to do weapons, but now we do this. And I think one thing that Wayne Enterprise does now is insurance. And so every time they break somebody's house, they base a uh, well, house, uh, skyscraper, whatever it is. Every time they break something, they have insurance already on it. So they get to fix it up and then increase that person's premiums. Hence, Bruce Wayne is making money off of destroying his own city. For the most part, he owns most of Gotham probably by now. They He probably leaves it as the name Gotham just for nostalgia's sake because of his parents. But Bruce Wayne has destroyed just about everything in the city i'm sorry batman has destroyed just about everything in the city and after destroying everything in the city he just buys like fixes it back up like nothing never happened he's like think about it if he does that he probably owns the construction company that rebuilds everything which also probably works in metropolis too he re he does insurance to make sure that probably make sure their uh rates stay good if it's something that he damaged and if it's a place he doesn't damage, he goes ahead and buys it he literally probably owns a majority of the uh, city and nobody knows why and that then seems like a scheme because basically i'm destroying the city so i can make money so literally he's keeping his own company busy by destroying stuff and fixing it back up. Like I just recently I decided to watch because of a friend of mine, Steven Universe. And there was an episode where um what's her name? Pearl enjoyed merging with Garnet. And in their fusion, when they merged together. They were this uh, this giant woman that I can't think of what her name is right now. Um, and but because Pearl enjoyed fusing with her so much, she constantly kept refixing what was making it to where they had to do that, and she kept doing it over and over. Until finally Garnet found out and got very upset. And that's basically what Bruce does. He constantly breaks stuff down so that his company can make more business off of fixing it. And let's say that happens with everybody. Because if you know that there's going to be damage done. You probably don't make sure that you have insurance through your company to go ahead with it. Which I want to say is illegal. Because that's, it's almost like, and I'm not saying it exactly, and you tell me if you think differently about this, because this is just me throwing out a couple of things, but the whole structure of comic books, and I know once you get into comic books, you shouldn't like focus on it because then you lose your illusion of it because we're just trying to talk about superheroes who are saving the world, being the heroes that we wish we were. 
But some of these things are just plain weird. But Batman doing something like that is kind of like someone fouling off their insurance when they burn down their house. But the problem is that he's the insurance company. So he's destroying people's property and putting them out of business temporarily as he fix it. Just so his company can make money. And then he has to pay them back for the business that they lost. Granted, he probably has a company that can work at any time, 24-7. And even if it gets destroyed again, he probably fixes it all over again. Which means his company continues to keep making money off of his mistakes. <sighs> the... Uh, I feel like I've gone off of just the try, but I'm putting Batman on blast because that seems somewhat legal. Batman destroying property, then buying it back. But that would be the only way to explain how these worlds he have. Um, let's miss a nixle play or back might all of a sudden, every time something happens, re snaps it back, re snaps reality back into being how it was before it happened. But then those storylines, in some cases, still keep going on. And those buildings are still back up. And I could just say, well, it's just what happened. It's, you know, Batman just has to happen. And that's just like saying that Deadpool, no matter what damage happened to him, his clothes is just fine. You know, or why in the world when the Hulk all of a sudden grows, uh, Three times what Bruce Bound looks like, his pants can still fit. Um, you know, not like I won't see the Hulk, uh, Hulk dick stick now or anything like that, but I'm just saying, you know, them pants is stretchy as hell. No one can explain how how you get pants so stretchy. Um, them you know, some stretchy pants. I mean, like, literally, from it'll be like. You going from Orlando Bloom to Yokozuna. How in the world do your pants stretch so hard, bro? I mean, like, sure the knees break. But them pants, you went from a six foot tall man to a ten foot tall man with muscles. Like your muscles just like blew up out of nowhere. Uh no. Nah, uh-uh. Um uh, there are some things that logic can't explain. And maybe just just a system of all comic book shows just not supposed to make any sense. Um, maybe, you know, it makes sense more when you have the um, the claw situation or the Mandarin. Like, I'm, or Cobra. I almost got him, but he got away, you know. Which then I guess you don't have the feeling of what you have a lot of times of who satisfaction. I finally, you know, at the end of the episode, Batman caught the Joker and everything was fine with the world until Joker broke out. But, you know, he broke out. And, but maybe that's the reason why he keeps getting out of jail because all the proof is basically tainted because. Batman was the one who was on trial. I mean, Batman was the one who got the evidence and gave it to the police, but the police can't say where they got it from. So the chain of custody, unless they make Batman a legit police officer or C or have a certificate that says Bat uh, Batman certificate of CSI, I um, mean, criminal investigation, there's, there's no way of them actually being able to say that the evidence that Batman brings to them is not tainted. Sure, the back computer tells them also. Sure, the back computer can tell you just by where everybody is with just basically following their phones or take our pictures they have, like what they did in uh, the Dark Knight. But a computer is not going to help with the evidence that you're supposedly picking up from the Joker. Uh, and that's not saying that Batman is not a great detective, he is a great detective. But showing you yourself as a great detective and a great CI in a court case when you have no actual like training 
as Batman as sure we could say that uh Bruce Wayne has trained. Bruce Wayne took a couple online classes to be able to get his certificate and be an assistant. Like technically, if we say that everything that Batman knows Bruce went to training for and he actually has actual experience on how to do this, that would be great. That means Bruce Wayne is so able to prove all this stuff. But that means that Batman still can't because that would then mean that Batman would have, I mean, that Bruce Wayne would have to say that he's Batman. At the same time, Superman is nothing but pure muscle. And every person that he catches, sure they have superpowers. But, even though a lot of them have superpower, parasite, I'm sorry, less than have superpowers, uh, live wire, um, I'm trying to think of other Superman villains, Bizarro, sure they have superpowers. But even though they have superpowers, he can't go in and say what happened when he was... Because he has no training in taking evidence. Actually, he has no evidence whatsoever that anybody uh, that he captures actually did what he said. All he has is word. And unless you think that he literally is a Boy Scout, you can't take his word for nothing. It's hearsay. And hearsay is not a bad thing, but you ha there's no evidence to prove what you said. Like, I came in when I found, I came in and saw that Lex was about to um, blow up such such building that I was in. There's no proof that he was going to do that. Sure, there's robots that he had, but... A lawyer could pick away at what, what happened if uh, we have proof from Lex that those robots were going out of control. That's all Lex has to do. Lex can just build a program. And he probably has. Saying, well, I had no control of those robots. There is no way of like literally putting these people in jail unless... Uh, Batman or Bruce, Batman or Superman literally creates their own prison and without due process put the people in jail themselves and lock them up. There is no other way to do it. But <laughs> I've been talking for a while and I'd like to know what you think. Do you think that the justice system in comic books is fair equal right does it work and because like i said there's a lot of ways i can find hope and but if you think so cool go ahead and tell me if not just tell me to shut up because you you want to enjoy your movie you know you want to enjoy your movie you want to enjoy your cartoon you don't want to think about how these people get out and all this stuff. It's cool too. And. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm putting out three videos today. Um, this should be the second one. Um, but I am putting out three. Because I've been behind. I have not been doing my little best to try and get y'all out. I apologize in the first video. For taking a while. And this one I'm apologizing at the end. Uh, the next one I ain't apologize. Y'all got. This one was supposed to be for last week. But y'all got this week. And the one before this was been done. Right after New Year's. That's when you get. <clears throat> this one you get in this one. So uh, yeah. Um, hope you enjoy. All three of these. And I'll catch you later.